Howdy! Thanks for learning about A Mess With Me, Aaron Boster. Did you know that your brain might have the ability to repair itself, even after MS damage? Imagine a future where you could regain a function, walk better, see more clearly, think more sharply, all because of brain repair. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? Today, we'll be discussing an exciting frontier in multiple sclerosis research, remyelination. That's the process of repairing the damaged myelin sheaths that coat the nerves of the brain and spinal cord. Now don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Hey! In multiple sclerosis, the immune system mistakenly attacks myelin, the protective coating on the nerves. This results in symptoms like difficulty with mobility, pain, bowel and bladder problems, fatigue, and cog fog. Remyelination aims to restore this protective sheath, potentially reversing damage and improving function. Let's take a closer look at remyelination. You could think of the brain as a network of wires, and the myelin is the plastic protective coating on the outside of the wire. In the setting of multiple sclerosis, the immune system mistakenly attacks the myelin, <laughs> stripping off the plastic coating and fraying or even breaking the wire. In the absence of myelin, the electrical impulses can't be propagated, they can't be sent, resulting in the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Now here's where remyelination comes to play. Your body has its own specialized system for repair. There are cells called oligodendrocyte precursor cells or OPCs. You could think of them as construction workers tasked with repairing the insulation. They travel to the site of damage, they transform into oligodendrocytes, and they start to make myelin to put the plastic coating back on the wire or put the myelin back on the nerve sheath. Here's a step-by-step -step look at the process of remyelination. Number one, when myelin is damaged, it sends out a distress signal to attract OPCs. Number two, activation of the OPCs. These precursor cells become activated and then they travel or migrate to the area of damage. Number three, once the OPCs arrive at the area of damage, they transform into oligodendrocytes, the cells that make myelin. Number four, myelin production. The oligodendrocytes begin to produce myelin and they wrap new fresh myelin around the nerve sheath, restoring the insulation and allowing the nerve to again conduct electrical signals. Think of remyelination as repairing frayed electrical wires. Once the insulation is replaced, then the current or the nerve signals can again flow smoothly. However, our brains are not naturally good at remyelinating. As we age, the available precursor cells, the OPCs, become less and less and it becomes harder to activate the ones that are still there. In the setting of multiple sclerosis, chronic inflammation in scar tissue makes it even harder to activate those repair processes. This is why MS researchers are focused on finding ways to support and enhance remyelination. Research into remyelination is still in the early stages. However, recent studies highlight the promising strategies to promote myelin repair. Thinking about the oligodendrocyte precursor cells, the OPCs, these are those repair workers whose job is to make more myelin. There was a really cool recent study done in a basic science laboratory studying a rodent model of multiple sclerosis. They were able to manipulate these cells to keep them alive longer and to help them migrate to the areas of damage. Now this bodes very well for future research in humans. Next, I'd like to talk about a drug called clomastin fumarate. So clomastin is actually an over-the-counter antihistamine, so it's a cousin of Benadryl. And it was studied in a trial called the Rebuild Study. And in this trial, they found that it was able to help remyelinate, and in specific, help improve visual signals in people with relapsing forms of MS. Clomastin was also studied in a trial called TRAP-MS. In this trial, they looked at people with progressive MS as opposed to relapsing. And unfortunately, they literally had to stop the trial early because of surprised progression of disability. The patients ended up getting worse. A common diabetes medication called metformin is currently being explored for its potential to rejuvenate cells and possibly assist with myelin repair. Presently, there's ongoing trials trying to combine clomastin and metformin to see if there can be an amplified repair mechanism. Pipe 307 is another hopeful. Now this oral medication targets M1 receptors. 
and early investigations have demonstrated that it's safe. Currently, there's trials ongoing looking at the possibility for remyelination in patients impacted by MS. Antilingo-1 is another hopeful therapy. It aims to block a protein which actually inhibits myelin repair. Now, early investigations in Antilingo-1 have had very mixed results, but there's ongoing trials trying to refine its potential. Despite this exciting progress, remyelination research faces several significant hurdles. Number one is translating animal research into humans. There have been many promising therapies which seem to work in animal models, and yet when they move into humans, they fail miserably. The complexity of MS lesions and the variability of human disease makes this transition extremely challenging. Number two, chronic lesions in scar tissue. In multiple sclerosis, the areas of damage oftentimes develop scars, and this creates a physical barrier which prevents new myelin from being formed. Number three is OPC depletion. As we age, the number of available OPCs naturally decreases, and the remaining ones become harder and harder to reactivate. And number four, the need for safety and long-term testing. New therapies require extensive clinical trials to ensure that they remain safe and effective over a long period of time. Now this adds years to testing and obviously can slow the pace of progress. These challenges highlight why remyelination research is a long-term endeavor. However, with each study, scientists are uncovering new insights that bring us closer and closer to solutions. Sometimes when patients hear about remyelination therapy, they ask, well, could this represent a cure? And the answer is no, not by itself. The goal of remyelination therapies is to repair areas of damage, which is super important, but it doesn't prevent other areas from becoming damaged. And in many ways, it's one piece of a total puzzle. In my estimation, it would take three different kinds of therapies to create a hypothetical cure for multiple sclerosis. The first is remyelination to repair areas of damage. The second would be a neuroprotective agent to protect current neurons from becoming injured. And number three would be potent anti-inflammatories like the currently available disease-modifying therapies to quell inflammation in the brain and spinal cord. I believe that we would need all three to help beat this multifaceted disease process of MS. The road to remyelination is challenging, but it holds a tremendous amount of promise. I envision a future where we can regain lost function. It's a long way off, and there's a lot of research yet to be done. But with every clinical trial, every participant brings us that much closer to finding a breakthrough. If you're living with multiple sclerosis, you have a unique opportunity to contribute to this progress. By participating in clinical trials, you can play a direct role in helping shape the future for multiple sclerosis. If you think about it, if no people with MS were willing to volunteer to participate, we would have zero therapies available to treat the condition. If you'd like to consider being in a clinical trial, ask your MS provider or go to clinicaltrials.gov and look up clinical trials near you. Each participant can make a difference. What about this therapy excites you the most? Leave your answer in the comments section below. Now, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future content. If you'd like to up your game and learn more about how to beat up on MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.